Hello and good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to welcome you in, uh, whether you're watching in the morning, the afternoon, the evening. Um, this is our first Jack, this is Jack Carpet Care's first partner webinar. Uh, four Keys to Your Digital Marketing Plan, presented by Ruth Ann Rose, Rashad Pitts, and Lillian Lively of Rose Marketing Solutions. Uh, if you, we haven't met yet, my name is Mason. I'm the content marketer here at Jackrabbit, and I will be your host today. As many of you already know, Jackrabbit Care is an all-in-one child care management software built for speed, ease of use, and the growth of your child care centers. And as always, we're excited to offer these webinars to you by committing to our community and providing resources for success for you all. We're excited to explore these resources by partnering with industry experts like Rose Marketing Solutions, and hope you look forward to similar webinars in the near future. Now, uh, I'd like to take a moment to introduce our speakers today. First up, we have uh, Ruth Ann Rose, CEO and uh, founder of Rose Marketing Solutions. With over 15 years of experience in executing hyper-local marketing plans for childcare centers, Ruth Ann is a seasoned professional in the industry. She leads a team that currently manages local marketing for over 120 locations nationwide. With an average partnership of eight plus years, Ruth Ann enjoys working with entrepreneurs to educate, create, deploy, and measure ROI for successful marketing strategies that are customized to each client and provide peace of mind. Rashad Pitt, Director of Digital Advertising, experienced youth mentor turned savvy digital marketer. With this uh, foundational background, you can count on Rashad to truly have the interest at heart. He is a graduate of State University with a Bachelor of Science in Biology. He has always been adamant in exploring how to help others reach their full potential and exceed their goals. This mentality paired with his B2C ad experience cross-platform ensures that your digital advertising needs will be handled with care. And last but not least, we have Lillian Life, Creative Lead Marketing Solutions. Uh, Lillian is an expert in graphic design and content creation. She has an innate ability to captivate audiences across a multitude of platforms, continually, continually demonstrating her exceptional skills in brand design, management, and strategy. Lillian's talent and deep commitment to crafting meaningful and authentic brand experiences that honor unique narratives are what set her apart. Now, uh, with introductions out of the way, I'd like to take care of just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, if you have any questions along the way, uh, we be having a little bit of time for Q&A at the end of the presentation. If you want to get it out there, push it ahead. I will keep track of those questions and make sure the team uh, sees them. So do whatever you prefer, but there will be a Q&A portion. Uh, with that, I would like to hand it over to Rose Marketing Solutions. Perfect. Thank you so much for the, for the warm intros. And we are happy to be here and to work with Jackrabbit Care and providing some, some content for all of you. Um, I believe Lillian Rose, Lillian Lively rather, is going to, to share her screen for us. So while she brings that up, I'll just let you know that we basically have three, well, yeah, there's three different targets that we're usually trying to hit. So Rose Marketing was created in 2008, and we have a, a super successful track run with working with child care centers and their local marketing. And by local marketing, I mean it's usually that three to five mile radius around your school unless you're in a, a rural area, maybe your radius should be a little bit larger. But typically we're helping um, schools again focus with on the families that are within three to five miles of their, of their school. We also help several regional groups. Um, we do work with a lot of multi-unit owners. And so a regional group is typically when those multi-unit owners are banding together and they want their advertising dollars to go farther. So we help several of those type of organizations as well as we do work for one large corporate franchise with their local marketing. Um, we are always doing our very best to do what we call the three E's. And that is when we have a client, um, we are always trying to make sure that we let them know that we educate them on the digital locally, I'm sorry, digital marketing options that are locally available to them to try to attract that local customer. So we like to educate our customer um, so they know all the options. We then execute on the part of the plan that, that we work on. And then the most important is evaluating. So I'm hoping in each of your marketing strategies that you're taking that important step of evaluating because you want to go back and see how well something worked so that you can tweak it and then continue on. 
So I have, of course, Lillian and Rashad with me today. Um, we're each going to handle a different key of your, your four keys to your marketing plan. And so with that, I'm going to um, ask Rashad if he wants to go ahead and step in and talk to us a little bit about that first impression. Dale, thank you so much, Ruth Ben. Um, so hello, thank you all for joining us. Um, and I think I kind of just want to start here, right? So as you see this first house here, um, just as you're watching it, as you're actually watching it live, watching it on the recording, uh, what is the first word that comes to mind, right? What are the first thoughts that come to mind here, right? Um, the reality is somebody owns this property, but they are not keeping up with this property, right? And the reality is as an owner, director, leader in your school, if you're not taking control of your first impression, you are allowing the world to create it, right? So the whole goal here through this presentation is to equip you with tools to improve your first impression, right? So that it looks more so like this house on the right, okay? The reality is this forever changing digital landscape can be overwhelming, right? So let's remove the noise for a moment. Let's pick a place to start, right? It can, do I, do I need to be on TikTok? Do I need to be on Yelp? Do I need to be on Winnie? Do I need to be on Facebook, right? It can, it can go on and on and on. So here, we really just want to eliminate the noise for a moment, pick a place to start in order to strengthen your digital storefront, your first impression, right? So that not only you can find your audience, but that your audience can find you, okay? So as we kind of stack on these different keys, it will create these four keys to your digital marketing plan. And I want to start with key number one, which is pretty much the foundation of it all, which will be your branding. And I'll pass it over to Lillian. Well, hello there, everybody. Um, as has been said, my name is Lillian, um, and I am the creative lead here at Rose Marketing. Uh, so I like to say I do the pretty stuff. Um, so I'm going to talk to you guys about some about some of that fun stuff today. Um, branding is kind of an overarching topic of this entire presentation in a way, but I want to dive specifically into the visual aspect of your brand um, and how that can be a better representation of your school. So when you look at these two pictures, um, I feel like we're looking at two really different schools, right? So I will say right off the bat um, that both these are our real schools, right? Um, and all of this, all of the differences that we're going to pick up on here um, can be communicated just in these pictures, right? We know the saying, a picture's worth a thousand words. So they might be equal in quality, programming, offerings, all of that. Um, but if I saw that top photo on a website or I walked into a school and it looked like that, or I saw it on Facebook, I might have a couple red flags come up, right? If I'm a potential parent, I see a lot of clutter, I see chaos, I'm not seeing structure, I'm not seeing students interact, that kind of thing. Where this bottom picture is going to communicate more the enjoyment that the students are having. Uh, I perceive the school is cleaner, higher quality, more fun, more engaging. Uh, and that's why it's so important throughout this presentation, I want to, I'm going to keep coming back to this, that we have to keep an eye on how we're portraying ourselves. Because a lot of times the visuals will do talking for you that you may or may not want it to, right? And it's important to make sure that they're saying what you want them to say. So what is your brand and why does it matter? Your brand is your opportunity to set the stage for what your school is and the quality of your care. So a strong brand is going to stand out in a crowded marketplace and could be the difference between a parent choosing your school or another. Uh, it's going to make your school more memorable, more marketable, and it gives the idea that your school is an established, reputable brand in a community, right? And that's what we're after, uh, especially for those of you who might have multiple locations. Um, it's really important to continue that brand consistency across all of your locations because that's really what's going to build your reputation and help your uh, brand grow. And I, what I like to say is that a brand is a promise of what people get when they get you. It's your digital storefront. It's your calling card. It is sort of the, the promise of what what our quality is, what are the experience that you're going to continue to have with us every time you step in our door. So one of the biggest things to consider as we're starting to build out a child care brand is your audience. So who are we talking to? Um, we're going to have a different message if we're talking to one person versus another. And so it's really important to be able to tailor that message to your audience. So a lot of times we're going to think our audience is just prospective families, you know, on your website, on social media, that kind of thing. You're thinking, I want enrollment. Um, but it's important to remember that the majority of your followers on social um, or people who are checking your website or reading the emails you send are going to be your current families, right? And then retention is going to be just as important as enrollment, if not more. So we want to make sure we're speaking to them just as much as the prospective parents um, to continue that retention. 
Another thing to consider is like many schools, you might be struggling with hiring. Uh, and remember that prospective staff is also one of your audiences. And if they're looking to apply to work with you, they probably are looking at all of this to determine whether your school is somewhere they would want to work, right? Um, and that same thing can be said of your current staff. They're one of your audiences as well. Um, your brand can be a source of morale. It can be a source of commonality. It can be something that builds your school from just a workplace to a family or somewhere that people really want to work and be proud of and represent. Ideally, your brand is something that they want to represent themselves. So a few questions. I won't go too deep into this because there's a lot on here, um, but these are just some, some things to spark your um, your curiosity, sort of get your brain working on this topic and see what you can ask yourself to build out your brand and differentiate yourself from your competitors. So some highlights here, what's your story? What is the story of your center? Why did you come into this market? Why are you passionate about it? What are your mission statement, core values? Um, these are the kind of things that should be written out somewhere on your website um, because they're a huge part of your brand. They're not visual, right? Um, but they are a part of the story of your company and of your center. Um, and that is part of the message that you're trying to build. And it can really inform some other things about your brand. What's your reputation in the community? What do parents in the community have to say about you? Where do you fall in the market around you? Um, know what your reputation is. You might need to survey people to find that out. You might need to take a look at your reviews, that kind of thing. Um, and that's something to work on, right? Is it where you want it to be? Is it not? Um, and we'll touch on that more later in the presentation. What do enrolled families and current staff love about your school? That's a great way to figure out more about your brand. Um, and surveys, again, can come in handy there. Um, what does your staff really love about coming to work every day? Why would someone want to enroll in your school? That's a big question, right, that we might not ask ourselves often enough, is what makes people enroll in my school specifically? What do you do differently than your competitors? What unique offerings do you have? What is setting your school apart? That's really what I would come down to. What makes it better than the other options, right? Because those are the things we want to raise up and highlight um, to really understand what uh, the, the differentiating factors and value propositions that your school specifically has. So the biggest thing I, I want to talk about today is, as a graphic designer, I'm very biased toward this, but um, visuals convey importance, right? So we've already covered who you're talking to and what you're trying to communicate, but what people often underestimate is how much the visuals are going to convey meaning, right? So when I look at something like this, I don't really know where to look, right? I The only thing I have conveying importance here is that it's bold, but it's it's all bold, right? All of this is just a wall of text looking at me. There's no hierarchy of what's more important than the next thing. What do I need to know quickly? I, I don't know, right? This doesn't convey any sort of memorable visual that I could associate with the brand. It's just information. But if I were to take this information and tweak it just a little bit, add some color, change the weight of some things, uh, add in a part of the logo, this is what it looks like. And when I see this, I immediately know what I'm supposed to know quickly, right? It's Woodland Academy. That's what I need to know. And you'll see this brand pop back up throughout the presentation. This is a, a fake school that we have for um, visual representation on this kind of thing, just to show you how easy it is to upgrade from something like this to something like this. So the next thing I'm going to see after I see Woodland Academy is the website. And that's important because that's where I can go to get information, right? Um, if I'm if I need to know any more information about this school, I know exactly where I can go to get all of it. But then if I'm really ready to act, that contact information is available as well. I'm also using a version of the logo for the school so that you get a bit of the visual branding um, and maybe that the that will sort of lodge itself in your audience's brain as something they can remember later and connect to the next things they see. So I have all the information I need at a glance, and it's eye-catching and it's memorable, right? And all it took was changing out some of the visuals. So that's why it's really important to think about these things. But how does that actually work in practice, right? Like how do we take a wall of text and make it beautiful and make it understandable at a glance? The real key is gonna be a brand guide, right? So I'm sure a lot of you have one. I'm sure a lot of you don't. Um, this is a little one page cheat sheet kind of document, um, but it could be up to a you know big 20 page packet or it could be um, your Canva brand kit. It's a great resource for this. Um, but this is really easy at a glance kind of minimum that I would expect uh, a brand to have. And that is gonna have your primary logos, your secondary logos, icons, that kind of thing. Um, how your typography is going to work. So this is what we use for headings. This is what we use for subheadings, that kind of thing. 
Um, and then our color scheme, right? Uh, and any other visual elements. This brand uses a lot of little woodland animals, and that is a good way to keep that sort of visual brand going throughout different experiences. So this is a really great thing to keep on hand, um, to give your front desk, whoever's making your social media, anything like that. Uh, but the real magic here is with third-party vendors. So as a, as a vendor ourselves, I get something like this from a brand and I know how to deliver something that is on brand for them and will create a consistent experience for their viewer. Um, but the best thing you can do is put this into your Canva brand kit if you're using Canva. Um, that way when you're making a post, you can really quickly, easily grab the correct font, grab the correct um, logo, all of that, and make sure that it's all going to be consistent, clean, recognizable. Um, this is going to be the hallmark of your brand. So what do we end up using that for, right? Um, everything, in my mind. Um, consistency is going to come in and really be the key. So here's an example of that from that last brand guide I showed you where we've implemented that into an email, a website, a form, and they all look similar and have the same vibe, right? Um, they use the same fonts, use the same colors, same elements. And the benefit of that is if I were a parent and I were enrolling in your school, maybe the first thing I saw was your website, right? I Googled you, maybe I looked at your Google map listing, which we will definitely be talking about shortly. Um, but if I land on your website, I might not notice it consciously if I'm not a designer, but I get the impression of it, right? And it's gonna leave an impression on me. Uh, I might remember, oh, they have these little woodland animals, I like the fun colors, that kind of thing, even if it's subconscious. And then when I go to submit an inquiry, I might get an email about the program that I'm interested in, and it really is just going that extra mile to have the email also look like your website, right? Still be on brand, still be consistent. And then when I get the form to fill out to apply, that also looks the same, right? So I have that consistency, and then maybe I come in um, and everything from that point on, right, when I'm enrolling, is going to have that same kind of feel, the tour stop signs, all of that. So what you're communicating to a parent when you do that is that you are consistent, right? The quality of your care is consistent and that you are a reliable source of that quality of care. Um, and your brand is going to be the biggest marker of quality that you have before somebody can step foot into your school, right? So if you're in the grocery store, for example, and you're trying to choose between uh, two different brands of a product, you can't taste it, you can't really feel it much, um, you can't really get a lot of information about this product other than the packaging, right? So think of this as your packaging. That is going to be the biggest communicator of quality that you have until someone can actually try out your product for themselves. And by creating that consistent experience with your brand, you're communicating that that's ongoing and that you're committed to a consistent, reliable quality of care. So the last thing I'll say on this is that um, it's really important that you take the visuals that we're talking about with brand and live up to them and bring your center up to them to that standard and make sure that the experience that they have from submitting an inquiry, Googling you all the way to enrolling and being at your school in the day in and day out is a consistent experience that's in keeping with your brand, right? And that's where you come in. So it's up to you to maintain the brand experience when they actually walk into the school. Uh, companies like us can help you with the visuals and help you get leads and things like that. But it's really up to you to bring it home by continuing the brand experience in person. So that's everything from the front desk, phone calls, emails, signage, social media, your website, parent interactions, all of it. Um, really wanting to continue that consistency of quality throughout the entire parent experience. So I'm going to pass it over to Ruthann, who's going to talk about your website and how we can integrate some of that there as well. Thank you, Lillian. Yes, you know, your, your website is, as Lillian mentioned, kind of your digital storefront. That's where people are going to land initially. And through our working with, you know, over 100 child cares, as previously mentioned, we know by looking at all their Google Analytics that these pages that I'm showing here are the top pages of typical preschool child care centers. So why is that important? Well, it's important because these are the pages that give you the opportunity to tell parents what I call the so that message. So each of these pages, you really should be making sure that there are statements on them that tell parents why you do something and why it matters. So on the home page, you'll definitely want to mention you know, geographical markers of where you're located, located, you know, so that they'll recognize that you are in their neighborhood. School information, typically that type of a page is going to list you know, what hours you're open for, 
Um, so if you have extended hours, you'll want to mention you have extended hours so that parents have more flexibility. If you've got different curriculum advantages than your competitors, again, you'll want to mention what they are and why that's important to a parent. Same thing with program pages. An example of a so that statement on a program page would be sign language. So if you're teaching infants sign language, you'll want to do a statement that says, we teach infant sign language so that they can express themselves in their world, so they can participate in their world, and let people know what, what they're thinking and what their needs are. Now, tuition details can be a little tricky. I know there's definitely two different camps of of people and their thought processes on tuition details. Some want to list their actual price and some don't. So no matter what your philosophy is, I understand both. Listing tuition details as far as the price can uh, maybe cut down on the, on the number of phone calls you get for people who, who can see the price and understand that it's either in or out of their price range. Um, but also if you put the price there, you may not have an opportunity for them to call for you to tell them exactly what's included. So again, whichever camp you fall in, just know what's really important here is that you're telling everything that's included in your tuition so that people who are comparing you to somebody else understand that may not be an apples to apples comparison. You may be including things that another school doesn't. So again, I wrap all this up in a pretty bow. These are the most often visited pages that we're aware of and just I really encourage you to look at each one and make sure what sets you apart and what you're really about and what you're really offering is especially listed on these particular pages. Now we do have a graph that shows in general for two different types of programs, summer camp and before and after school care, what traffic looks like. And again, I'm, we're getting this data from Google Analytics, which I'm going to talk a, a, a bit more about in a few more slides. But what I really want you to understand is that in the child care preschool world, we're all aware there's different seasonal trends in the number of traffic or the types of traffic that come to your website. So I know we're, we're kind of entering where people are interested in before and after school care. According to the slide, the traffic is starting to go down a little bit. And we also know that, you know, in that January to February, people are really interested again in summer camp. So this slide is here to remind you that the time to begin thinking about summer camp, what you're going to be offering, what the program is when we get your site ready. It's actually before January. So that November, December time when, when your traffic may be a little bit lower is a perfect time to think about the future. And be sure that your website is ready with all the details about summer camp before that traffic picks up. Now this slide doesn't really show the, the constant interest in general enrollment. Uh, but again, you probably know there's peaks and valleys to that as well. So again, just be sure that your website is ready way ahead of the seasonal trend. Now, your website can also help with um, educating visitors about you. We know they're going to try to learn about you on social media and on your website before they ever come into your school. So I really encourage you to sit down, maybe with one other person, and go through every page of your website. Does every link work? When you pull up a page, the example here is the blog, so someone is Again, this is our, our, our fake site, as Lillian referenced. But if you hit the blog button of this website and there's a message that there's no blogs available, you know, that's, that kind of plants something in someone's mind. It's like, well, why does it say blog if there are none? So I would turn that blog page off if you're not currently doing that. But also your newsletter pages, your menu pages, your calendars, go and make sure they're up to date. Because again, we don't want someone landing on your website and finding out-of-date information or links that don't work. So always be ready for that traffic. Now, the website can also help with staffing. We have learned through a lot of different schools that we work with that people do come to your website to learn about what open roles you have at your school. So some things we'd like you to do there or to think about is to make sure your social media as well as your website feature the great things of what it's like to work at your school. Uh, and you can find that out by doing surveys. If you would like to survey your teachers and find out what it is exactly they like about working for you, and then kind of reverse engineer everything and be sure those comments, the things they like, appear somewhere on your website, appear somewhere on your social media. We've also found that by having a simple form on your careers page that people can fill out to let you know they're interested in applying has a lot of value. 
um, we have really learned through our experience that people who come to your website and fill out a form saying they're interested in employment uh, have a higher tendency to show up for the interview. And we know that's important because we know this is a critical time for hiring. So again, just make sure your website features some information so people know what it's going to be like to work for you. Now, I did mention Google, Google Analytics several times. If you're unaware what Google Analytics is, it's the uh, mechanical device that Google uses to let you know what's going on with your website. And what I mean by that is it will tell you how many people have visited, how long they stayed, what pages they looked at. This is all really value, valuable data to yourself as well as to us as marketers. So back on July 1, Google did make a change. They stopped doing um, what they called universal analytics. That's the way they recorded traffic and all these details I've mentioned in the past. And you have to do a conversion now to get the new analytics to start tracking. And you really, really want to make sure that you do that step. So this gets a little confusing, a little technical. So I am putting into the chat a blog that we have written about G4. Um, you want to make sure you read it. You want to make sure you visit with whoever's working on your website, your webmaster, to be sure they've done this conversion for you. Um, I think you'll find that really, really helpful. Um, so again, enough about Google Analytics. Just be sure you research it and have done that update. And with this, I'm going to pass it over to Rashad, who's going to talk to you about map listings. Bill, thank you so much, Ruthann. And to kind of build, continuously build on that foundation, when we think about the brand and the website, <clears throat> excuse me, that does correlate with that initial image that we showed of the two houses, right? So now that we essentially have the house cleaned up a little bit, now the question is, how do we get traffic to come by the house, right? So this key, you can expand it out to online listings, right? But I want to go a little bit more niche to map listings to correlate with that analytics based off of data. I see how valuable these listings are, right? So why is this even relevant? More than 3.5 billion searches are made on Google daily. Right, and it's only increasing. About 46% of these searches have local intent. Right, What does that even mean? When we consider how a parent is going to find you, there's a few ways they're going to actually learn about you and your school. Right, But one major way is going to be Google and or your map listings. Right, So when we consider the phrase local intent, these are search, search phrases like daycare near me, preschool in Dallas, child care in 76060, which is a zip code based search. Right. These are top search queries in this space. Right. If you think about if you're looking for a mechanic, you're looking for oil change, you're going to try to find somebody very local and that it does not that same concept is in this space as well. Right. So when we consider this example here, you'll notice as the parent goes through the journey, if you take one step back, they're going to type in daycare near me. And essentially, the first set of ads will be, as you guys kind of work this process, you'll see the top couple of things are going to be ads. Those are Google ads, right? But right underneath that is going to be these map listings. So I get a lot of questions kind of being in this advertising space of how do I show up on top? How do I actually get more real estate on Google? These map listings is prime real estate when we think about actually showing up on the top of the screen, right? So if we kind of consider a few examples on the next slide, these two listings, immediately there's a disconnect, right? Both of these are real preschools, right? But there's huge missed opportunities. When we consider the one on the left, minimal to no image, images, just an empty parking lot, right? When we consider the one on the right, I'm not sure if the first thing I want to see as a parent is the flu wants you, right? That's what that graphic says in this, in this image, right? And even though they're trying to present, this is how we're tackling the flu, I don't even want any correlation with sickness, flu, anything of that, right? So although these are somewhat extreme examples to an extent, these are real examples, right? And these are first impressions, right? So with kind of the child cares that we work with across the US, this is actually more common than you may think, right? So this may be kind of a, a, a laughing scenario in this particular example, but we see this a lot more often than not because a lot of preschools or owners or leaders aren't actually either aware of their map listings or are just not keeping up with their map listings. So think of these listings as your digital storefront, right? An extension of your brand, your culture, your values, right? And the question I want to encourage you to kind of just ask yourself, do your listings reflect your school the way you intend them to, right? Remember, your brand is an experience, okay? So now let's look at the other side of the spectrum. 
what do these listings say about these schools, right? Warm, welcoming, clean, attention to detail, safe, right? That now is that first impression immediately off the jump, right? And if I may highlight one actually item in this particular slide is the listing on the right. This is actually going to be an Apple Maps listing. So please take note of this. I have seen a wide range of schools to where their Apple Maps listing is inconsistent or just not updated or not claimed, right? When this is the scenario, you're allowing Apple to kind of just pull and pick from their databases. This leads to inconsistency. This leads to wrong phone numbers. This leads to so many different things because the database that they pull from may be outdated, right? So some of the databases that they pull from, just as an example, is going to be Yelp. Yelp is a major one where they pull photos, reviews, and information from there. But they also pull from like Winnie. They pull from essentially third-party databases in that. So if your Yelp is inconsistent and or if you just ignore your Yelp and you're just like, I don't even want to deal with Yelp, there's a good chance that your Apple Maps pulled that information from Yelp and now your Apple Maps looks just like your Yelp, right? So main takeaway here, make sure that you're claiming your Apple Maps. Make sure you're optimizing it. And please do not ignore it because if you think about how a parent's going to find you, they're either going to go to Google, type in daycare near me, or they may just go to the app. They may go to the Google Apps map or the Google Maps app, sorry, and then the Apple Maps app as well, just as options to find things local to them. So do not ignore this information because based off of the data, this has been top three of lead generation from what I've seen for all the schools that we work with consistently, right? So this is a prime, prime, prime real estate for lead gen. So simply food for thought, be sure you are showcasing your quality and take advantage of this, all right? So just as kind of to wrap that Apple Maps concept up, Apple Maps is making a lot of changes. You can go to Google and type in Apple Maps Business Connect, and then they'll walk you through the process of how to claim it and how to update it. They are adding a lot more features to their system that honestly gives you a lot more opportunity, right, to showcases, competitive advantages, offerings, right? So just take a look at it as you kind of um, move away from this webinar. Take a look at your Apple Maps. Take a look at your Google Maps because um, you may be interesting. It may be interesting in what you find there. All right. So another way to showcase your quality and it parallels very close to that map listings is going to be through your reputation, your reviews, right? So when we look at key stats and data of what users actually look at when it comes to reviews, the obvious ones, positive experience, high ratings, recent reviews, right? To where over 50% of users, parents stated that these items are what they pay attention to, right? But the metric I actually want to zone in on a little bit more is going to be the third item of are you responding to reviews, right? And not only if you are responding to reviews, but how are you responding to reviews, both good and not so good reviews, right? What is the tone? Is it welcoming? Does it showcase the ability of positive conflict resolution? Is it inconsistent? Is it defensive? Is it accusatory? Right? Are your responses super generic to where it's empty of that personal connection? Right? These details may seem very minor, but massive when we consider a parent's decision of trusting you with the care of their child. Right? The little details are considered. Right? So through these questions, I want to just encourage you to think beyond reviews and more so towards what is your reputation online. Okay? So in the next slide, we actually took a screenshot of the previous kind of GIF and a video that was playing to showcase new features and some of the changes that Google is doing, right? So Google, their focus is always going to be, how can I make the, the journey and the process more convenient for my users, meaning Google's users, right? And one of the features that they actually have added or shifted a little bit, I wouldn't say added, but shifted, is that really that ability to filter based off of reviews, right? And if we consider this space of early education, good chances that parents are going to choose four and above probably a minimum i don't know many people that are going to choose 3.5 or three stars when you consider like i'm placing my child with you right so when you're at that cusp let's just say of 3.9 or even in the sense of like 4.4 you now this can work for you or against you because if you are at that cusp you now can get removed out of conversations to where you're not really even considered unless you're running ads but even then if you are a three point nine, right? But then everybody else that they filtered is a four, 4.5, 4 4.6, they may not choose you either, right? In that scenario as well. So long story short, with this convenience factor, make sure that you're staying on top of your reviews um, because you want to make sure that you're in these thresholds and you're in these conversations because if you're not, your competitors 
could possibly be in that and just gain that, that advantage over you. All right, so the main takeaways, make sure you're responding to reviews, create a steady flow of reviews. And as a side tip, consider shifting verbiage, right? So maybe not even leave us a review, right? Because that's kind of like a give me a review, but more so share your experience, right? This, this holds the opportunity for them to become brand ambassadors, right? So that allows them to highlight areas of your brand, your culture, their experiences, your promises, right? How you provide peace of mind. And even furthermore, just imagine they mention a teacher's name, right? So now as a teacher, I read this or I hear this, now I feel better. Now that's cultural morale lifting, right? So it can work in so many different areas, not only for enrollment, but then also for employment as well, right? When staffing, because if I see you have good reviews and a lot of people, the community loves you, I might want to be a part of that team, right? So just keep that in mind. And I think to now tie it all together, to be clear, be clear, the biggest takeaway of this whole section of the map listings and reputation management is, well, let me take a step back. So this slide in particular, everything that I just mentioned about reputation, how do you get reviews, like all of that. There are systems and there are things that you can put into place in order to make that easier for yourself and your staff. This right here is an example of an email that could be sent out with that verbiage of share your experience, right? How is your experience with us? But you can even expand this out to text messaging, right? In the sense to kind of go back, convenience, 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 make the journey convenient for your parents to then help you generate those reviews, right? So to now tie it all together with the map listing and reviews, a lot of traffic is going to come from your map listings. That's why I specifically zoned in on map listings and not expanded it out to online listings because that can get overwhelming, right? So make sure you have a good understanding of what you currently look like and a plan of how you can improve it. Um, one of the first stops, look at your photos, right? That in itself could be the decision making for a parent in itself, right? So make sure that you're adding high quality photos, consistent information and reviews that speak to experiences. Um, and I will challenge you on this webinar as, as you watch this video, as you move through this, look at your Google Maps, look at your Apple Maps just as a starting point and plan out how you can optimize that and or claim it, right? We all know that this decision for a parent may not be the easiest, right? When we consider extending their trust of their child, right? So make that decision easier for them as you take more control of your first impression, all right? And with that, I would love to segue it over now to the social media side and another opportunity, and I'll pass it back to over to Lily. Hello again. Um, yeah, so I want to kind of wrap this into um, social media specifically and uh, how all of this can play in there as well. So. I think it's pretty obvious why social media is important, but here are some stats on why uh, specifically. 83% uh, of people ages 18 to 49 are on social media. I'm sure most of us are on this call. Um, and that they, on average, are scrolling the height of the St Statue of Liberty every day. And I think that is huge to think about when we think about just these little scrolls adding up to 300 feet every day. Uh, and they're spending at least, I mean, I think this is a low estimate, but an average of two and a half hours on social networks and messaging. So that's a huge chunk of time that you have access to um, and real estate really of people's attention that you can grab onto. So we wanna make sure that we're really making the best impression possible when we get that time from people. And I will also add that um, as Gen Z becomes more of the parenting cohort in the next few years, these numbers are only gonna go up. Um, so we have to keep that in mind that the, that generation especially is going to be going to have some um, expectations, I would say, about the digital experience of the companies that they're working with. So um, a, a little comparison again. Um, I have two real schools here. Um, one is on the left. Um, their username is just the word daycare and then some numbers. Um, their name on the platform is just daycare. Uh, and I can tell you that their um, profile picture is a very blurry picture of their logo, um, but it's pretty hard to see, um, pretty hard to discern. Um, and I say this not to sort of put them on blast or anything like that, but really just to show you guys the difference between um, social media and a couple different types of social media content that we recommend that you, uh, that you have. And we really recommend that you do both. That's why I wanna show you this. So on the left, I have content that we would refer to as organic content. Um, it's, you know, the students in school doing activities, that kind of thing. Um, and on the right, we have more branded content, right? So this is going to be stuff that um, is more informative about the school, more for building brand awareness. So we're talking about testimonials, frequently asked questions, 
um, program information, that kind of thing. Um, kind of mini bite-sized pieces of your website on your social media. And so we really encourage both types of content. And I will, I'll say that multiple times throughout this section. But um, what I really want to highlight here is how this person has, how this school has optimized their um, social media page to actually capture leads as well, right? So the left feels like it's just for parents that are currently enrolled, where the right feels like it's for parents that are currently enrolled and prospective parents, as well as the prospective and current staff. Remember that part too. So on the right, you see that um, I've, I've blocked out all the names to protect the innocent, so I'm going to tell you what they say. Um, on the top, it is their full school name is their username and the name of their profile. Uh, their bio is, again, the name of their school and then uh, their mission statement, which I think is a really great place to pop that because it just sort of reiterates what you're all about. Uh, and then, of course, they have their website as the link um, and they have, you know, you could also choose to message them. But what's really important is that if I'm a parent and I stumble upon this account, I know how to act, right? Where if I found the one on the left, I wouldn't know what to do. Um, so this is just trying to capture leads at every opportunity, right? So the big question we get um, uh, is what should I post, right? You have a lot on your plate uh, and we totally get that. You probably wear a lot of hats. Um, but we can. here's a little cheat sheet kind of, of of some topics you can post about for that organic content. Um, Friendships between students. We love to see happy kids. Um, we love to see them connecting with each other. So hugs are always great. Um, smiles, love that kind of stuff. Curriculum highlights, great way to talk about what sets your school apart is to show what are kids doing in school all day, right? So whether that's showing them doing activities or um, a peek into the classroom, that kind of thing. Um, staff shout outs and culture highlights are going to be great for those staff um, audiences as well as for the parent audience. You might not be thinking about it, but when you show a prospective parent that you and the enrolled parents that you value your staff and that you treat them well, that's going to make their that's going to help them know that those that staff is also going to value and treat their children well and that you're creating a culture that they can feel comfortable putting their child in. Um, but it's also a great motivator for your staff and uh, just a fun way to keep morale up, right? Is to really recognize people when they're doing well. Community involvement. So this could be anything from donuts with dads, or when you invite the firefight, uh, um, the fire department to the school, anything like that. Show how you're involved in your community. Uh, what sets your school apart? That's kind of the overarching idea here. But you know, anything that that really sets your school apart. Do you have a splash pad when it's hot out? Do you have uh, sign language, as Ruthann said? Those things that may seem obvious to you are not obvious to your prospective families, right? And then, of course, nutritious meals and snacks. Who doesn't love to see food on social media? A uh, great thing to highlight to show that you are fueling the kids well. Um, and if that's a differentiating factor for you, if you, you know, only serve organic or you meals are included in tuition, um, highlight that, right? So some helpful hints to make this a little easier for you, because like I said, I know you're wearing a lot of hats, um, is to use Canva to create and schedule your content. Um, so you can link your social media profiles to Canva uh, and get, it, you can make it so that the posts automatically go up. And that's something we also suggest in general is to pre-schedule your content as much as you can. Um, we don't necessarily recommend pre-scheduling everything. You know, so a lot of organic content can be posted day of or the next day, whatever. But when we talk about things like Q and A's, testimonials, brand, those brand awareness pieces, um, and sort of school information pieces, those can be made far in advance, right? And then like sort of parsed out over the months. Um, so holiday posts, same thing. You can make those in advance in Canva or somewhere else and have them go out um, on a regular schedule so that you don't have to worry about posting every single day. There's just always something going up. Um, not that we recommend that you need to post every single day. We would recommend at least two or three times a week. Um, but every day is great if you can do it, but we know that's not always realistic. And then you can always consider supplemental posting services. Um, this is something an agency like us or someone else could help you with, but basically we can take over that brand awareness part of the thing um, so that you can focus on just that organic content and there's sort of an auto rolling amount of content getting posted for you um, that is filling in that um, prospective family audience. A few reminders, um, feature your culture. As we've talked about, highlight those happy teachers, happy students. Uh, in school content, that organic content is always going to be the most engaging. You're always going to get the most likes and shares and comments on smiling, happy faces in school. 
Um, that's why we also recommend getting a professional photographer out uh, every once in a while to do some new pictures of your school for your map listings, for um, your social media, for your website, just so that you're using real, real content, real people. Um, but it's a little bit higher quality and sort of meets the standard that people expect. Know your audience. We talked about those four audiences. Just keep them in mind when you're when you're writing captions or um, speaking to prospective parents and teachers. You know that's who you're talking to in these captions and who you're um, trying to capture. And so keep that in mind as you're writing. Uh, stay consistent. Try to post regularly and stay on brand. Um, use a designated device and handler if possible. So try to not let everyone on your team post on social media. Uh, it's good to sort of have a, a standard voice and an understanding of like, oh, we've already posted about this event today, so we don't need to, you know, whatever it is. It's just good to have someone at least whose job it is to um, approve everything at least so that the voice stays consistent, the posting style stays consistent, that kind of thing. Uh, and always check for typos. You would be <laughs> astounded by how many typos we see in, in social posts from educators. Um, and I, I think it goes without saying, but that doesn't really bode well to a parent about the quality of the education if there are typos in your, in your caption. So make sure you're using something like Grammarly or just having a second set of eyes on your caption because we've seen some really bad misspellings and uh, typos that could, could definitely not bode well for a parent. And then lastly, make it beautiful. I've kind of touched on this throughout the presentation, but quality is going to trump quantity, right? So creating a more curated but really consistent branded experience um, can sometimes be better than just throwing as much content at the wall and seeing what sticks. So um, you're creating this digital catalog for your community and for your company. And so it's important to prioritize qualities that can be, um, you know, face your subjects toward a window for natural light. Um, try to post fewer pictures that are higher quality. Um, you know, if you, we don't need to post 100 pictures every time there's an event, that kind of thing. So um, I will pass it back to Ruthann to sort of wrap this up for us uh, into the four keys. Yeah. Well, thank you, Lily, and thank you, Rashad. Um, and of course, Jack Rabbit for hosting us. We're thrilled to be here. Yeah, these are, these are the, the keys that we think are, are super essential. They all tell part of the story and, and your promise. And so we have deep appreciation for being with you today. Um, really encourage you to um, speak up in chat. Let us know what new insights you've gained. You know, we, we'd like to know that maybe we've helped with a few aha moments. Uh, if you've got questions, we certainly have time available to take on any questions as well. So we do have a QR code we'll, we'll put up. So should you want to reach out to us, you certainly can. So we'll put that QR code up for you to, to see um, and reach out. But this is a time we, um, we would love to hear back from you. I see that Gwen has uh, some new insights. So Gwen, we're excited about that. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll hand it back to our host here and, and see where you want to go from here. But again, happy to be here. So thrilled to be a part of this and hope we can help you learn a little bit more today. Hope we've given you some insights. Thank you, Ruthann. Yeah, we're very excited to have you here. Um, to our audience, yeah, any questions you have, please feel free to drop them in the chat now. Um, we'd be happy to get them answered for you. And if not, if it was just an insight takeaway kind of day, that's okay too. Uh, let's see. Janetta wants to know if this is will be available as a recording. Yes, it will. Um, we will have this available uh, within the next 24 hours, uh, and you should be notified. Also keep an eye on our socials. Uh, we'll be posting about it there as well. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all so much for being here. Um, I, I think that is, I, I don't know if we have any questions here. So I do want to thank um, Rose Marketing Solutions once again for uh, being here. It's been very exciting. I want to thank our audience for being here as well. Uh, we appreciate you spending a little bit of your very busy schedule with us. Um, and we hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. So goodbye, everyone. And uh, thanks again. We'll see you soon.